Happy Wednesday. Welcome back to the Lord and Arts channel. I'm John Lorden. Thank you so much for spending some time with us here today. Last week, I had the privilege of interviewing one of the most inspirational people that I've gotten to watch through the media this year, and then, of course, um, be privileged enough to have some contact with. And that is the sister of missing person Maya Melietti. Uh, her sister's name is Mary Chris Droulet. And looking at missing persons cases and trying to analyze what works well, particularly about working with the media, I think Maya's case has a lot going for it. And that's in no small part to Mary Chris and the efforts that her and her husband Richard have made around this case. Not only are they launching searches in areas that they're not really sure where to look exactly, but that's not stopping them. But they also had to raise awareness to what was going on with law enforcement. And were they really getting the effort that they were expecting to help find her missing sister? So some of this interview was included in last Friday's video, but there's a lot more to it. And I wanted to release the whole thing uncut. So that's what we're going to do here today. Please keep in mind, I was originally doing this interview in the context of the Gabby Petito case, how much exposure that case has gotten versus these lesser known cases. But quite honestly, before Gabby's case, Maya's case might have been the biggest in terms of media, uh, at least that I've covered here on, on the channel. So I think there's a lot we can learn from this. As a matter of fact, I'm going to add this video over to the missing persons tips page at brainscratchers.com. But with all that being said, let's spend some time with a very special person. Here's Mary Chris. So Mary Chris Drolet, I'm the oldest um, uh, siblings of my sister, Maya Amlete, who's been missing since January 8. Well, actually January 7th was the last time we, you know, we heard anything from her. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, where did she go missing from? Um, she was last seen at her house. So that was, you know, um, yeah, she was last seen at her house. And after that, you know, we we don't know. And this is in Chula Vista, California. Chula well. Vista, yeah. California. Yeah, it's, um, it's interesting because I know some of the context around this conversation is obviously talking about Gabby's case. And a lot of us are concerned that there is a domestic violence component to Gabby's case. And mm -hmm. in a very similar way with your sister's case, we're worried about that component as well, right? Correct. Yeah. 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 Um, so how would you describe the level of support that you've gotten from the media. And I know there's different levels. You've got, you know, us guys in social media that are trying to help, but then you've got major media. How do you, how do you describe the experience you've been going through with them? I, I think with my sister's case, I think we're lucky enough to be able to get, you know, a, a, a good coverage, um, you know, with the national and also, I mean, local, the national and also uh, the international, you know, um, media level too. So I think we were fortunate enough to, to be able to do that. Um, but not as much as, you know, of course, with, you know, the amount of support and, you know, and, and, and level of coverage with, with Gabby, but, you and know, how did you, how'd you feel about that when it came out? Cause it, when I look at it, it's one of those things where I wish all these cases that we talked about on my channel got that level of support that Gabby's did, but I can understand why some people were feeling like, wow, like where was media and the law enforcement efforts? I mean, in Gabby's case, we have her being found in the middle of nowhere, basically. And with your sister, we've been looking for, what's it, 10 months at this point? Or it's all nine months. Nine, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Um, again, you know, um, in different cases, yeah, I mean, like, you know, uh, different cases, we can compare apples, you know, to oranges. But, um, you know, with us, um, you know, at the beginning, you know, again, we didn't have that urgency um i think from you know the local you know um uh, law enforcement so uh, that's very hurtful for us you know and comparing to again i can't really compare it to gabby but then it just the amount of support uh outpouring support from her case to our case is you know it's like it's, it's really hurtful you know it is um uh i i i i felt you know um <sighs> 
that jealousy, of course, I think, you know, that I would wish we had the same amount of support as, as what she had. Um, but then again, it, it when um, she was found, we were, you know, of course, we were happy that, you know, her family had closures and stuff like that. But then you always kind of like compare, can't help comparing yourself to them too, that you wish you have that same amount of support. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's very hurtful to go back to 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 go back to that beginning um, of our case that we never have any support at all, no urgency from the law enforcement. Um, we didn't have that much um, again support uh, from the public itself, even just the local, you know, the community, um, you know, and um, any and any organizations or any search and rescue organization. We never, at this point, we never really had any search and rescue operations that actually help us search for my sister. So, you know, to just to think about that, it's really, really painful. Yeah, you know? yeah, I understand that. And because of those challenges, it also kind of changed, I think, your approach. And I just want to also call out um, that you've been supported by your husband. You guys have been working on this on all fronts. But what I noticed through the media, and tell me if there's other pieces to this, is you kind of divided your efforts between trying to raise issues with law enforcement, where you would go and hold rallies in front of the police headquarters, and do your own search efforts. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we, we did have, you know, a good um, support also from, you know, the, the local community. Um, so, and, and also some of the, again, like the um, retired um, detective that we've been kind of working and supporting us and, and he's been advising us and, you know, he's been kind of like our advocate on, on how to, you know, to deal, you know, with the missing person. But um, we... <laughs> we've been trying, you know, I quit my job, you know, I haven't been back to work since, you know, the day my sister went missing. Um, so I'm doing this full time. I'm not sure if it made the difference for us in our case, because I continued to, you know, to rally for her and um, to keep her name on the spotlight and, you know, to keep the pressure from, you know, to uh, the law enforcement. So, um, yeah, I, I, I made sure this has been my full time job to, you know, to keep on, you know, um, bringing awareness and, you know, hopefully we'll bring her back home. But well, and you've um, even upended more of your life than that, right? I mean, there's periods of time where you're basically living in a trailer as you're going from site to site as well. Yeah, yeah, because we are, you know, an hour and a half away um, from, we, we live, you know, an hour and a half away from Chula Vista. So yeah, I've been, I've been living in the campsite, so just sometimes by myself. Um, and then on the weekend, then my husband comes, you know, and help me out. Um, but most of the time, you know, I'm at the campsite. Um, and, and then again, I go back and forth also. Yeah. Is so, Richard keeping his job? Uh, yeah, he's trying. Uh, he has his own business. So that's why he, he is very flexible. So um, he have his own shop here at home. So, um, yeah, that's what he do. That's that's such a tricky balance. You have to remember to like take care of yourselves and your home and your family as mm -hmm. you're doing these search efforts. And I'm just I'm really glad to hear that you guys have seemingly found the right mix. You've been at this for a long time at this point. So um, yeah, we, we put our, our lives up hold on hold for now. Um, and uh, I have a 16 year old and an 18 year old, you know, a, a daughter and a son and they fully understand. And sometimes, you know, I feel bad too, because then I don't, you know, within the almost nine months, I been kind of like not disregarding them, but, you know, like just putting them on the side. But sometimes we, you know, when I do come home, you know, trust to have, you know, a, a, a good dinner with them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Trying. And I'm, I'm happy to say that uh, literally right now, I was very surprised to see that she's actually at home right now. <laughs> so she does get home every now and then. Um, mm -hmm. So when you were looking for media coverage initially, did you hear any reasons or excuses why you weren't getting the level of coverage you were looking for? No, um, not really. Because um, then again, at the beginning, I, I don't really know the extent because I don't have any, you know, much comparison, you yeah. know, on, on, on the coverage until, until now, you know, and then we're like, wow, you know, that's, that's a big difference. Yeah. Um, 
I, I thought we had a good coverage with the media, you know, with my sister's case, because every now and then the local media still covers her um, with our searches um, um, almost like every other week, you know, um, we're still in, you know, in the news, but not much, you know, like a public support kind of thing. Uh, you know, we continue to be in the media asking for help. Please come and join us to volunteer searching. But we just get the same amount of people, you know, week after week, same volunteers, same, you know, same, again, same, the same people that comes, you know, every week. So I, I don't know <laughs> what else to do to be able to get people to come and help us. Um, but well, that's and all Honestly, you're an example of one of the cases I see that's actually working right in terms of you're right. The pulse of media has been consistent. Um, and obviously, if you're if you've got that, we, I think I call them hashtag team Maya. But you've mm -hmm. got that kind of core group of supporters that are coming and helping you time and time again. Um, maybe let's flip the conversation to that side, looking at you guys as an example of all this stuff going right. Do you have someone that's contacting media? Is there a member of the family that's acting like a PR agent? Like, how does no. this work? No, no. Um, uh, it, they actually contact us, like contact me. Um, but then it's it's maybe because we're constantly doing something or like every week there's something going on or sometimes, you know, we there's something in the case, like, you know, like, the family law or, you know, something out, um, you know, they do search warrant here or if something comes out with, you know, with the gun violence kind of thing. And right. so, you know, there's always constant update uh, in our case. And then so that's what I think keeping my sister's case up also in the media. So, um, yeah, con like there's always been like up and down. There'll be like a couple of weeks that's been quiet and all of a sudden we have an update then you know then, then the media will cover it again so the local media yeah yeah honestly um just looking at kind of what the media has done with that case and i think it's important to remember that there is an aspect of the media that has an entertainment factor i mean i know it's kind of gross to think about the reality of talking to someone like you who's feeling this pain in your heart about where is my sister but when it comes to them putting whatever they're going to put on a TV screen or on a radio station, they're kind of thinking of story elements. And really, with right. with May's disappearance, this has broken off into three different legs of story now. You have her disappearance. You have the gun violence restraining order charges uh, on Larry. And then you've got the family drama of a family that's not able to see children that they all care about and want to be a part of their lives. Mm -hmm. um, so, and it's interesting because this is, I don't see it in a lot of cases where you get these kind of multiple story chains going, but from your, to the benefit of you guys, it is keeping you in the media regularly because there's court filings that are coming in. There's new details that are coming out with the search warrants and all that kind of stuff. So, right. yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah, I, I, I think that's what I say, you know, we're still kind of, Sad to say, but fortunate enough to be able to still be in the media. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, honestly, I, I hope and pray for the day when I don't have to worry about you showing up in the media anymore because you have the answers that you're looking for and that you have me back home with you. Um, so I'm sure you've seen, and I've, I've seen that you were quoted in some articles kind of about this. There was a big rise in awareness around underrepresented cases, missing persons cases over the past few weeks. Since that kind of spun up, have you seen any positive movement or change? Has there been a new focus to Maya's case? No, <laughs> to be honest, you know, there, there's no change at all. Um, you know, we, we got more, I, I guess, um, more coverage, you know, but, um, there's not much change. Um, they've been, you know, some messages that's still coming, you know, our way, you know, supporting us, but, you know, just, um, um, not, I wouldn't say there's no change. I'm sorry. There's not much changed, you know, as, you know, as the last time, um, as evidence to what we had last weekend, um, we got, cause sometimes like our team also goes, you know, um, up and down. So at times we only have like 
about 15 people, like 10 to 15 people on a weekend search. Um, but, you know, uh, this weekend we have more people, like about 20 something people. But again, it's not much of a difference. These are, you know, um, our, our team members that's been, I mean, our search volunteers that's been coming, you know, a few times, you know, with our searches. Um, there's a, uh, just two person that actually showed out for, for the weekend search. Um, so we, we have two. <laughs> okay. That was that was a change. But you know, um, you know, as much as we wanted to, you know, get more volunteers to come and help us, um, we didn't get that much of a difference. Um I'll be honest with you, I was looking for some type of change too, because I've put out so much media on these cases. And in particular, I had done a missing and murdered indigenous women's case uh, in early September. Uh, her name is Ella Maybe Gay, and her niece is coming on to this show also to, to share her experience. Um, and I was expecting to see some type of raise in views for that video. Like I went and looked at the stats for that video and said, oh, hey, everyone's talking about this. Are we finally going to get some attention to these types of cases as well? Nothing. It's just, yeah. it's exactly the same. So for all of the social media, get up on your soapbox, you know, people yelling at each other through Twitter about, hey, do you care about these cases? When it comes down to it, there's information that's out there. And from what I'm seeing, no one is, no one is going to grab at it. No one is still reaching for that information. No, unfortunately, that's what I'm, I've kind of noticed too. And um, yeah, um, is there any difference? It's like, there's no difference, but you know, if we, probably can keep the conversation going and if anything you know if it makes any any change at all if we keep on going I, I will definitely support that um yeah. for you know all the families that has a you know missing loved ones you know I, i'll jump into that yeah now i know um your relationship with chula vista pd a little tenuous at times a little bit of stress going back and forth where is that relationship now um we're okay right now, you know, um, we try to, to be a team, but, um, you know, I guess, um, we, I haven't really talked to, you know, L Lieutenant Peak, which is our, you know, direct, um, contact with the, uh, CBPD. Um, but, um, um, he does tell us, you know, um, uh, well, we, you know, we do have a good relationship with them, uh, open kind of open communication, but there's a lot of things that, of course, he wouldn't be able to to tell us, but he keep us updated. Yeah. Is there anything that you're seeing in terms of Gabby's case that you think is a talking point for you to talk to the lieutenant about? Are you seeing any approaches or things that are happening with Gabby's case? Well, you know, just, just probably, you know, the urgency. Uh, I think that's what my my whole thing is that if I could probably help out in a way uh, that if law enforcement put more urgency to any missing person at all, um, I would hopefully be able to have that conversation with them, you know, and, uh, and who knows, it might have, um, it, it's, it's going to change something. You know, with that, I, I think that's the one that I really, really wanted to kind of push, um, you know, with um, with the law enforcement, um, that urgency, you know, in the first couple of days or something that or just that show of support um, to the family. Uh, I think um, that's very important um, to give them family support at all, because we never really got that um, at all from them at the beginning, even the first, I would say two months, we never really got that, you know, show of support, um, that they're there, that they're they're doing their job, um, that they're looking for my sister. Only after we did that big noise and, you know, the Larry, I mean, the rally, <laughs> the rally, that's when they, they start, you know, actually putting that uh, putting more effort into my sister's case. I would think I would say that. Yeah. 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 I think you guys have just done a great job and even the way that you did that rally, um, it wasn't like it wasn't violent or you, you could tell that there was hurt. It was more about being hurt than angry, I guess. I think the mm -hmm. tone of it just really, um, 
it, it, I think it honestly makes it harder for law enforcement to deal with. I think if you show up and you're over the top and you're angry and you've got an angry mob with you, well, that's when their shields come out and they start getting super defensive. But when you're just expressing how hurt you are and why can't you get help and you're taking the stand and the tears are rolling down your face and your husband is behind you, you know, with his arm around you, that just motivates people in a whole different way. So, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you want the world to know about your sister? You know, my, she's a loving mom, you know, and um, she's a loving sister, um, very smart. And um, I don't think she'll ever, ever abandon her family at all. Um, she's fun, loving. She loves the outdoors. She's always going out and she enjoys life itself. You know, we, we have so much fun together um, and we miss her a lot. But, you know, we just want to bring her home you know, to her children. Um, well, hopefully we'll have closure soon. Um, yeah. All I could say but with her, um, I think if they look at her profile, you know, um, that's how she is, you know, smiling, even though she's hurting. But yeah, she's. She's definitely a fun-loving mother. Uh, do you have any other comments about anything we talked today or anything else you'd like to get in on this conversation? Uh, you know, thank you, as always, you know, for covering my sister's story and, you know, still praying and supporting, you know, um, supporting us. Um, hopefully we can bring bring her back home and get some closure soon. Um, but if I do want to help, you know, to help other families not to go through the same pain and I wouldn't say suffering like what we've gone through. If we could do a change, I will, I will definitely try and, you know, and, and do that. If we could, we could probably do a change with the law enforcement, I will try to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've seen a lot of families face the situation that you guys are facing. And uh, even sometimes when they do find their loved one and, and they have their answers, they're forever changed by knowing that, knowing that other people are going through that and that they have something that might be helpful to those people. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty sure, Mary Chris, that um, uh, after you have your answers, I'm pretty sure I'm still going to see you popping up trying to help other people as well. And I just that that warms my heart for as hard as this work is of being in touch with people like you realizing the heartbreak that you're going through on a day-to-day -day basis the upside of that is seeing the amazing strength that you carry and the wonderful things that you bring to the world through all this too so i really appreciate you thank you yeah yeah um yeah i, I would love to you know to uh, put a voice on whatever my sister's case out there so if i could help somebody a family yeah. You know, we will do that. Yeah.